Hi everyone, this is Dina Tollison and I have my little friend Muffin here. Yes, Muffin. Muffin is my wonderful Yorkshire Terrier and uh, and some of you have been asking to see her so Muffin's going to make a little, a little appearance in this video and uh, she's going to help welcome Erica Lancaster in a collaboration that we're doing. And so Erica and I met on social media and she's a wonderful artist and I love her spirit. She's got this wonderful uh, sense of, um, she did this video on um, affirmations for artists. She has these great drawing skills. She does watercolor, oil, acrylics, and she lives in Monterey, Mexico. So I'm going to have some information about how to get a hold of Erica's, uh, how to get to Erica's channel uh, in the information below in the description. Also at the end of the video, whoops, <laughs> at the, sorry, at the end of the video, I will have, um, I'm going to knock my painting down. Um, at the end of the video, I also have uh, some information on, on um, how to get to her channel with a little thing that you can just click. So what we're going to do for this collaboration is we both like to paint still life. So what our challenge that we said is let's do two lemons. So I've got my lemons here. And we decided that we were going to include one purple flower. So I'm going to pick one of these flowers and use that in the composition and then a blue background and then um, I'm going to do it on a little uh, 8 by 10 a little 8 by 10 canvas board so got this ready to go and I'm going to set up the still life um, and I'll take you all the way through the process and I appreciate you watching and I hope that you enjoy this video and, uh, and so let's get painting And hello to everyone here over at Dina's channel. I hope that you're having an incredible day and I am super happy to be here popping into Dina's video for a tiny bit just to say hi to you guys and to share how excited I am to be sharing this project that Dina and I did together with you. It was super fun and it's gonna be interesting to watch because Dina and I both painted a very similar subject in our two different styles. I have been a fan of Dina's work ever since finding her on YouTube a while back. I absolutely love her use of bold, bright, saturated color, which is something that I love using in my own work as well. And I also really admire and find her texture making technique super unique. I love how she leaves all this unbelievable, beautiful texture in her paintings. But aside from really admiring her at a, you know, technical level, I really love her as a person because she's super inspiring, positive, and encouraging, and she's so generous with the information that she puts out there. Being able to do this project with her was really an honor, so thank you, Dina, and I hope that you guys enjoy watching these. Thank you so much for listening, and talk to you soon. So now I need to set up my still life and I'm using my uh, light purple chrysanthemum. Taking a look at my color wheel and thinking about what kind of blue do I want to use. I know I'm going to put one of my husband's shirts uh, in the still life and it'll be this one. I like this kind of turquoisey blue color. I like how that looks against the yellow with the purple and uh, against a white. I think that's going to be a really pretty setup. So I've got the... Uh, the, the beginning of the painting just kind of sketched in here with a little bit of phthalo blue red shade and some yellow ochre. And I have the still life physically sitting really close next to me. Now let's go ahead and lay in a couple little marks here to indicate the shadows of the chrysanthemum. And I can see a little bit of a dark right over there off the side of the center when I look at the flower and squint to look at the shadows. Just kind of getting the shape and the size of that chrysanthemum laid in. The colors will all go on top of there later, but it's important to get these basic shapes going in here first. So I'm uh, just uh, scrubbing in with, I'm using a bristle brush here and uh, making sure that I've got all of the darkest areas identified. Um, there's a little shadow area that's right underneath those lemons and I want to be able to capture that uh, in the paint. So just uh, going in here and I'm laying in what is known as a um, like a gray pattern or I think it's called a grise or a grisaille if you speak French. But it's a, uh, it's a term that just means that you lay in basically your lights and your darks. So 
Now it's time to start adding the color. I'll put the highlight in uh, on the lemon that I can see uh, where the north light is coming in um, right and shining and making a really pretty glow against the fruit. So let me get um, let me get a little bit of light here on this uh, I guess on this second one. Yeah, on the, I'm looking. Okay, so there's a little bit of light. There's not quite as much of a brightness on that second uh, lemon, but I'm going to go ahead and um, tone that down a little bit with the yellow later. But let's go ahead and, and lay in the front part of the cloth. And I'm just using that same bristle brush uh, with the oil paint. This is all being done uh, in oil paint. And just nice and easy, just kind of letting that white uh, work its way across the table. There we go. I'm uh, just letting kind of loose strokes. I'm not uh, filling in every little section. I like some of that uh, yellow ochre underpainting showing through. I think that's a, that's a good touch. I'm also being careful to um, any of the areas that I've identified as shadow. I'm being careful not to let the paint uh, get onto those areas. All right, now a little lemon yellow. Uh, and we'll just uh, kind of go ahead and touch that in next to our highlight, get it worked in. So this lemon yellow, it's, it's nice that there's a color called lemon yellow since we're painting lemons here. But this lemon yellow, um, I'm going to go ahead and just put this in the very lightest parts of the fruit. It's important again to get like a sense of three-dimensionality that you um, that you kind of exaggerate the darks. So um, I can get a little bit of this yellow down here, some reflected light, uh, reflected light that comes off of the, um, the light bouncing off of the white fabric at the front. I can see that's a little bit, the fruit's a little bit lighter there. A little bit more right here on the edge. There's a warm um, little area where the two fruit are touching. I'm going to be sure to reserve that and make that like a nice orangey or a warm color. I can see that um, when I'm looking at the fruit and I keep uh, always checking over and looking at the still life, looking through um, the setup. I have a little, um, a little map board that is the size of the canvas. So when I peek through there, I can then easily tell uh, where everything should be positioned relative to um, to the subject. So a little bit now, we've got a little bit darker yellow that we're adding, and this is some of that uh, cad yellow. And I'm not uh, diluting the paint at all. I'm just using it straight out of the tube. Here's some yellow ochre. And it might seem like it's uh, too dark, like, oh, why are you putting that super dark color on there? But um, it'll all make sense at the end. It's important, it is again important to have dark enough colors because if you have, uh, wherever you have the dark color, then it will make the light color seem lighter. And I'm doing this so that we have enough contrast in the painting. And now um, at the back of the fruit, there's like the little area where the uh, the fruit matches up. I think that's the area where the fruit matches up with the tree, actually. Um, you know, just emphasizing that. I think that's where, maybe that's where it was, yeah, I think that would be where the fruit ends up with the stem. I'm not quite sure, but I believe so. I don't have a lemon tree, but I believe that's how it would go. All right, so now just, my lemons all came from the grocery store, but, um, and actually, uh, Erica might have over in Mexico. She might have lemons in her in her yard. We have a lot of rhubarb and cherries and those kind of things in Iowa. Blueberries, but uh, can't grow lemons unless it would be indoors. All right. So now, just uh, on my palette. Now, um, let's. Let's go ahead and play a little bit with some of this blue. So this is the Thalo Blue Red Shade mixed in with um, a Cobra. I have a uh, blue, it's a turquoise blue. And just have a nice combination of those two colors. 
And I'm going to go ahead and lay in this darker color. I, um, I'm going to be layering this color. So I'm, I'm putting in a darker color first and I like the effect of the yellow ochre peeking through with this darker blue. And then I'll be mixing up a lighter blue that matches closer to my husband's shirt. But I'm kind of liking how this darker blue is looking. I'm again trying to think about the contrast between the light color of the fruit and then the white tablecloth and then the flower itself and working to get a nice contrast. But I don't want the blue to be too dark. So as I'm going through this, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and, you know, lighten that back up again. Um, the way I'll lighten it is I'll be adding some of the titanium white into the, uh, into the mixture. Then when I approach the flower, I'm going to be careful to not uh, not cover up the areas where the petals are. So I'm leaving plenty of space. And this is just uh, this initial colors. I'm going to go back in then later and put that purple on top, kind of a lavender purple. And just uh, letting the brush just kind of go in there and make some different shapes. And in the still life, um, I'm going to go ahead and do also a video of how to set up a still life, things to consider and, and how to do that and everything. So since uh, Erica and I decided that our subject was going to be two lemons and one purple flower and a blue background, um, I'm connecting the flower and the lemons in a way that they'll form kind of one mass of color. So now let's go in with that lighter color. There we go. Yeah, I like I like how bright, even though it's not as much contrast, I do like this play of the light fresh blue against the fruit. I feel like that um, that's giving a good effect. So just coming over and I'm letting some of the paint actually touch up onto the fruit. And there's a little trick in painting that um, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and let your paint from one area to the other overlap on each other and then you can come back later. Um, that avoids the feeling like it's a coloring book kind of a thing where you have an outline or an edge. When you allow some of the paint to go and overlap one area into the other then um, it, it just kind of uh, it just kind of makes a neat effect. I'll go back later and soften that edge but I'm letting those two areas, uh, you know, overlap. All right, yeah, there we go. So we'll just wipe that off. And, and we're also, um, when we do that, we get a really super soft edge. And the, the edge of the fruit uh, is a curve. It's a turning area. So it's important that that area feels soft. Now it's going to be time to ground the painting. So just with another little bristle brush. Just going in here and adding um, Mars Black to the bottom of the painting. And what we're doing is we're, what is called grounding the painting. And this is the uh, darkest area in the painting. I'll go back and soften that edge because we don't want it to have too hard of an edge. We want to, um, this, this grounding principle is that the, we want the fruit to feel like it is part of the earth or part of the ground. And when we put this dark, dark shadow underneath, then that uh, really helps give the feeling that the fruit belongs to the earth or it belongs to the table. There we go. All right, let's go back now with a little titanium white and let's restate some of those brighter areas on the front of the tablecloth, just using straight white without uh, mixing it in any other color. Just letting it go right up to our shadow area. And we can soften that transition between the lemon shadow area and the, the front of the tablecloth later with a clean brush. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go in and 
pay a little bit more attention to the fruit itself. Let's go back in with some of that cad yellow and describe the fruit by adding additional colors and additional tones. So I've added a little bit of cad orange and white to that yellow and mixing up a color. We're going to warm up this color and and, uh, and it seems shocking at first but it's all going to blend out. Get a little bit here, I can see a little bit of a shadow there and then this warm area where the two fruit are interacting. I really, I think that's probably my favorite place in the still life is that little area where they're interacting and touching. I really like that. So I'm going to be careful not to over blend. Just let the brush stroke show. I picked up a little bit of the blue um, on my brush, but I can wipe that off later. That's fine. All right, just mixing a little of the yellow ochre into that. Now let's go in and really darken the back of this fruit. Um, it's really in shadow. So with this north light that we have, everything that's not um, being hit with the light on the back side of the fruit, it's, it's important to uh, show all that shadow area. Okay. Now a little more of the yellow ochre. And just get that worked in. Trying not to over blend. I'm just uh, letting those strokes follow the direction of the planes of the fruit. And the whole idea is to really capture the effect of the light as it hits the fruit. I'm just uh, following with my strokes with the brush, following the direction that those colors, and I'm seeing those colors and those values. As opposed to just going and just making circles around it, I'm using in, uh, straight lines and straight, uh, straight marks with the brush. Let's go uh, once more with this highlight. Want to make really sure that that highlight is nice and bright. I'm mixing up with some of our dioxazine purple, a little bit of orange, and some of the titanium white. A little bit more orange. There we go. I'm going to mix up a color to describe the flower. So uh, now we can get working on that flower. So that we need uh, a light, a light color and a dark color to describe that flower. Let's take a little puddle of that color and add some more of our titanium white. Get that whipped into shape here. Get that color. All right, that's nice. And let's get one more color. Let's get a. Uh, an even lighter color going, a highlight color. That's pretty. And just some nice easy strokes with the bristle brush on our medium color and this kind of lavender color just using these individual strokes to show that strong pointy feeling that we get with the chrysanthemum. I'm going to look now to look at the direction that I'm seeing the petals. So I'm now thinking about carefully laying in those shapes and 
the light versus dark that I'm seeing as those individual petals are reacting to the beautiful north light exposure. Some of these are curving in on themselves and some of them are poking straight out. And I'm thinking about these individual shapes and just uh, just drawing the the color as the light is hitting it. There we go. One there. And these chrysanthemums can be kind of tricky to uh, to paint because they're such light and airy flowers. It's easy to make them look too heavy. So I'm thinking about how light and delicate they are in each of these individual petals. And I'm not drawing each petal, I'm just drawing the shape that I see in the light. Just trying to get the feeling of the direction of each of these petals. Now some of the dark. Looking to see where the darkest little recesses are and draw only the dark shape. And again, the way to make our lights look bright and light is to have a dark. And there's a little dark area right behind where the light isn't hitting as much. It's right in between the two lemons. And I really love that little area where the purple of the flower is intersecting with the yellow. And on our color wheel, they're opposites of each other. So I think that the purple and the yellow are really going to make a dynamic pairing. And I want to make sure to juxtapose those two colors together. Alright, a little bit more of the middle color. Let's get a petal there. Okay. A little highlight. There we go. Indicate a few more of these shapes from the flower. There we go. Okay. So this, um, this combination of these three colors, the light, the medium purple, and, and the, the green, it's really a uh, just kind of a impressionistic approach to painting it, where I'm just looking at the shape and the way the light is hitting it. So now I can use this, uh, our turquoisey blue background color, can use that to now go in, I'm going to use a little of the um, this is a French ultramarine. I'm going to go in and this is kind of a darker version and a little bit more of a brighter bluer version. And I can bring that color to again also um, bring emphasis to the flower itself. And I can carve out little shapes of the flower. Uh, I can either do, um, you know, paint it by putting the purple on itself or I can use the the background color, the blue color in this case, and um, and then define the shapes by painting the background, and that's called negative painting. When you're when you're painting, uh, kind of carving a shape out by painting around it, and it's nice to be able to do uh, negative uh, painting and positive painting because then you can avoid that feeling of that something's like cut out or it's like a, um, has like a coloring book edge. 
Now I can just go back in here and finesse a few edges. Get a little bit more there. I'm going to work a little bit more on that reflected light. I'm feeling like that's a little too, I put that yellow in, but it's a little bit too bright. What I'm going to do back, uh, do is come back in and try and make a little bit warmer and darker version of that. So now that I've got this, the cad yellow on my brush, I'll, uh, I'll go back in and let's get that area light. Let's really increase our lights here. There we go with the lemon. I want to really be sure to emphasize that light that's hitting it from the window. And picking up a little of impasto tech, uh, like a nice impasto texture, a thick texture. Getting the shape of the lemon. Okay, now on, uh, I'm going to get in a little bit this color here. This, Let's warm that up a little bit with some of the cat orange. And that, uh, that shape is helping to turn the form so it looks more three-dimensional. That's it. That's better. We had it just a little too light. There we go. That's better. So it was a darker color and a um, with a little bit more red in it. That orange, that, that was helpful. There we go. All right. Now it's time to sign. So I've got uh, added a little bit of... Uh, linseed oil into the paint and now I can go ahead and sign. I've mixed up a light gray and I'll go ahead and sign my name. And I want to thank everyone for watching and um, I've really enjoyed doing this collaboration with Erica and I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel and I hope that you'll also go and subscribe to Erica's channel and I really appreciate you watching. All right, very good. Well, until next time, this is Dina Tollefson, and I appreciate you watching, and take care. Bye-bye.